Okay, so now we are in Judges 14, and we're picking up with Samson. So when we last left off, his parents were to give birth, and she gave birth to a boy. And now in chapter 14, he is grown up, and it says that he went down and saw a young Philistine woman, which, if you remember, his parents um, took the Nazarene, the Nazarite covenant over his life, which we'll talk about more throughout the chapter. But also one of the things that Israel was not to do was to intermarry with other um, of the surrounding peoples. And Philistine was definitely, I mean, they oppressed Israel, as we saw even in the beginning of chapter 13. So, you know, it says he went down, he saw a young Philistine woman, and he said to his parents, I've seen this woman and now get her for me as my wife. And the language here is just so peculiar to me like i i don't imagine you know what i was kind of thinking and i don't know you know i just always like to have the disclaimer out there this is just i'm just a normal person trying to study my bible with the tools i have available to me and i usually use the enduring word it's a really good resource it's free and it's online and so i don't know but one thing that i've seen throughout this chapter is how the respect for his parents just it wasn't really there you know and now get her for me as my wife like he was boldly taking this um desire of his that was an illegitimate desire to his parents and even his father they replied isn't there an acceptable woman among you know among israel among your people must you go to the uncircumcised philistines to get a wife and he said to his father which is interesting get her for me she is the right one for me and so god ends up he uses our mess and he turns it for his good right um, but that doesn't mean that what samson was doing was necessarily good if that makes sense him you know wanting this was not a good thing and you know throughout this like i said i'll point out you know where where's the you know i, I just have to wonder about the type of of parenting and the bible says that we should train up a child in the way that they should go so that they will not depart from it and I know that there's a lot of new um, parenting styles now, which are is so beneficial and helpful and healing in a way. But if not used correctly, sometimes you know we can, t you know, ask our kids to do something, and if we don't set appropriate boundaries for our children um, and consequences for certain behaviors, if they're doing an undesirable behavior, you know, it's one thing to say, we shouldn't do this. And it's another thing to say, we shouldn't do this. This is the consequence if you do it again. Um, I don't even know where I was going with that, but it just made me think, you know, if there's no follow through or if there's no, you know, true discipline, we are here to, as a parent, just like how God lovingly disciplines us, um, as humans, we need to be that for our children. They can't just be <laughs> acting crazy, not listening. Um, it's not acceptable. And I'm not saying that we should be harsh or cruel or unkind. That's not what I'm saying. But set healthy boundaries with your kids. Set expectations and um, let them know, hey, if you do this, this is what will happen. I set really clear boundaries with my kids. And that doesn't mean that they'll never do anything wrong. It just it helps a lot with discipline and making sure that they make it just you know help hopefully that they make good decisions and so you know i just have to wonder you know samson they couldn't have a baby and so i you know they got this baby from god i just i just wonder the way he's talking to his parents and the way that you know they kind of just went along with it they just said okay over you know a few times um it was just very interesting very interesting with me but you know god god uses everything he uses our mess he uses the good he uses the bad and despite the things that he were doing, he was doing, I believe the enduring word said this made this point. Despite what he was doing, he wasn't always making a good decision. God was still with him. You know, it says in verse six, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him so that he tore a lion apart with his bare hands. That is insane. Um, and he didn't tell his parents what he had done. Um, because it voided the Nazarite law. He wasn't supposed to touch, um, I believe they're not supposed to touch anything that's dead. Um, part of that is they're not supposed to drink or partake of wine or even go anywhere near, you know, wine or grapes. You know, they were trying to avoid that. Remember, they were set apart. Um, and so when we go ahead and read in, in verse 10, in the enduring word, they pointed this out. It said, you know, he was at a feast 
um, again, that's very close to voiding that Nazarite law. Um, and even when he, you know, it said that he went and he looked at the lion's carcass and in it, he saw a swarm of bees and some honey. He scooped the honey out with his hands, not supposed to touch anything that's dead. Um, and it says again, he did not tell his parents that he had taken honey from a lion's carcass and he went, and he gave them the honey. I mean, that's pretty bold. Not only did he do something that he wasn't supposed to do, but he went ahead and, and gave it to his parents. Um, I just have to wonder again, I really couldn't find much on the Enduring Words website, at least on what, um, cause I could be, you know, who knows I could, I could be wrong. Um, but I just thought that he was very bold in, in his decision-making and including his parents in those decisions. So again, um, remember that as you know, we are, we are our children's friends. I know that some people think, you know, I'm not your friend if I'm your parent. I don't agree with that. I heard in a video one time, someone said, you know, well, God calls us friends. So how can we not call our children, our friends? So, you know, that's a really good point, but there needs to be boundaries, discipline, consequences, and then follow through with such consequence. If the child doesn't, you know, and it doesn't have to be anything harsh again, but just as long as there's some follow through and boundaries, um, we need to make sure that we are um, having some sort of um, discipline. And so they're not you know, running around like Samson. <laughs> he was just constantly compromising um, over and over again. And then he had a riddle, which um, I thought was interesting. And, you know, it turned out that the same woman that he wanted so badly was the one who told her people. Of course she did. She wasn't loyal to him. It was all out of lust. You know, it just sounded like he wanted her because he saw her and then she just wanted him. And it wasn't, it wasn't, any, it wasn't anything that was based out of love from what I can read. Um, but he gives the Philistines um, a riddle. And he says in verse 12, if you can give me the answer within seven days of the feast, I will give you 30 linen garments and 30 sets of clothes. If you can't tell me the answer, you must give me 30 linen garments and 30 sets of clothes. And they couldn't figure it out. So they went to Samson's wife, verse 15, and they said, coax him into explaining the riddle for us, or we will burn you and your father's household to death. Did you invite us here to steal our property? And so she, you know, was dramatic, <laughs> the drama, you hate me, you don't love me, you know, told me, tell me the answer. And then she went and she told her people the answer. Um, and so again, even though Samson was just in a huge mess, it said in verse 19, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him. He knew, he knew his wife told them. And it said that he went down and struck down 30 of their men and gave those, the, the, items of the dead men back to the Philistines. And um, it says, burning with anger, he returned to his father's home. And Samson's wife was given to one of his companions who had attended him at the feast. So she ended up just running off with one of his friends, which is pretty sad. So long story short, Samson, he did a lot of compromising. He is supposed to be set apart and consecrated just as God had intended for him to be. Um, he also was very... Um, Ending, I guess. I don't know. I can't think of the right word right now, but he was very disobedient to his parents. And, um, but you know what? It's not all their fault. We should all, you know, we can, but also, you know, he is, you know, he made his decision. So, it, you know, we are the product of our decisions is at the end of the day, we have to own up to the things that we do and the decisions that we make. So that was definitely part of it as well. But what I gleaned from this chapter was, to make sure that I am properly guiding my kids, giving them healthy boundaries, showing them the way of God and so that they can make good decisions for themselves. Um, it doesn't have to be the case for Samson's parents, but if that was the case, then, um, you know, just, it's just a helpful reminder for me. Also don't compromise, you know, don't compromise anything. If he, you know, he compromised a lot um, and it ended up turning out bad. His wife was just given to one of his friends. I mean, that's, pretty horrible and all these people died um so yeah please please let me know what you learn let me know your thoughts i'm always curious to hear what you learned i post a new bible study video on wednesdays and fridays at 7 a.m eastern and i can't wait to study the bible with you again